My name is Brian Leonard, and I'm here today with Angela Weymouth and Kelly Benson. And, uh, and I met Angela last week, maybe two weeks ago, at the um, uh, overdose awareness vigil here in Portland. I have some footage of that you'll see later in the show. Um, but uh, when I met with uh, Angela, I, I was really interested in, uh, in what she's doing in, in terms of uh, helping the recovery com community. And so we're going to talk with them a little while about what they do, both of them. Welcome, both of you. Thank um, you. Angela, you want to start? Yeah. Um, so my name is Angela Weymouth, and, and I have owned Maine Hatha Yoga here in Portland for 13 years. And I've, I've noticed over the years that uh, a lot of people have been coming to our studio who have been involved in, in the recovery community. and, and whether in uh, have been sober for a while or in active recovery, uh, they have opened up to me and mm -hmm. expressed to me how much the yoga that we do has helped them um, to better themselves in every way and to stay sober. Uh, so, it, it, literally, I've heard people express to me this yoga has saved my life, and I felt like. It, they were just, you know, it, that's a term that people kind of use flippantly. Um, but I really began to realize that, no, they were serious right. about it. So, I mean, I, I would, like, I hate the phrase full disclosure. Everyone right. seems to be saying that. But I, I am a, I'm an addict and an alcoholic re recovering. Um, and uh, although I haven't tried yoga, um, I intend to. Uh, mm -hmm. But I... Um, uh, when I uh, first got uh, clean and sober and um, have been in the programs that, you know, uh, must not be named, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, and uh, even uh, I think, uh, you know, the person that was helping me through the program uh, mentioned that you can do any, I mean, you can do anything. Um, you don't have to just stick to one regimen. And so there's, there's tons of ways. I mean, I remember in um, the now um, closed down, and it's a whole other topic. Uh, perhaps it will be addressed in another uh, part of this web series. But mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, I went to um, Mercy Recovery in Westbrook, which mm -hmm. just recently closed. And uh, while I was there, we had um, uh, we had aromatherapists come in. We had come, uh, a person come in and do a sort of visual. Um, we would close our eyes and go through a visual... Uh, Nidra. Meditation. Yeah, oh, Yoga Nidra. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Maybe that... I didn't, don't remember that yeah, name, yeah. but that's probably Meditation, what it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, I mean, so even back then, I, I knew that, like, for, <laughs> for an alcoholic and an addict like myself, uh, I had to have everything. Like, there's, like, not one thing was going to, you know, I needed to, to reach out in, in many directions. And so yeah. when I saw... And I don't remember there being... Um, Specifically, like using yoga as as one yeah, as one yeah. of the forms back then. That doesn't mean that there hasn't been. But, yeah, I think um, people are uh, uh, awakening to it more yeah. and more, and there's <clears throat> there's a there's a realization that this a ancient technique of self realization is there's scientific proof of how it affects the brain and the body. And it's it's a holistic approach to wellness. Yeah. Um, it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional, and I, I I feel like for people who are struggling with addiction, there's an emptiness within themselves, and they're reaching for something to fill that hole, and the the addictions become something to grasp onto. And to and to reach outside of themselves, but yoga, and meditation, and w our ways to connect with ourselves inwardly. Not only that, but yoga is an opportunity to be involved in a community, and it's really the the closeness of the community that's so important for people who are struggling with addiction because they're still reaching outside of themselves. And so the yoga community becomes um, a safe space yes. to reach out and to get help back. And then to find that self-realization, that self-empowerment within them right. that unfolds over time with your practice. Okay. It's, uh, 
Awesome. Angel, you, uh, you're a teacher there, and yeah. you might start your own place, as yeah. you mentioned before coming in. Um, what, what has your experience been, and what brought you to, to teaching uh, uh, with uh, Angel? So, I am an ex-junkie. I was on the streets for several years in Boston. I was in and out of treatment centers and detoxes more than 12 times in a matter of three years. I just kept going in, kept going in. I wanted it so bad. I was not going to give up. And, you know, I just. Remember that. Remember that. Yeah, I'm just telling people out there. Yeah, don't no ever give up. Times, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kept going in, and every time I would end up feeling defeated. I just didn't know how I would end up back right where I was, you know. And nothing was working. I was looking for something that perfect way to fix me, you know. Right. And um, we all do. I remember finally maybe my. 10th time in 2010 I was 27 years old and I was in a treatment center and I had my first experience with yoga and the woman's name was June I remember her so vividly and I remember that I mean it was just I was in this treatment center for four weeks so it was just two hours every week I would look forward to it and I was doing yoga in my room after that and it was the first thing that I found that brought me like back to center got me out of my head as addicts, our heads are so chaotic and our mind becomes our own worst enemy and keeps us in this self-made prison. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is the first thing I found that pulled me out of that. And, you know, like through my breath, I was like connecting to my body, connecting my breath flow to my body movements. And it was the first time I felt calmness at my center. It was the first time I was like, gave me hope. For right. the first time, right. I was like, "Wow, this might this might be something that you know really it really resonated with me." Nice. It was the first thing I found that I was really able to connect with, and I held on to it very tightly. Very nice, yeah. very nice. You know, and I although I've been um, uh, it, in recovery for uh, some time, uh, I just mentioning uh, that uh, uh, early on. It was super chaotic, mm -hmm. right? and then uh, uh, for me, and um, and as things started to calm down because I was uh, working program and do it, doing it a ton of different things, not yoga, but um, it uh, I I got to a certain point and I felt so much better. But then um, because that's coming off of this horrible, like rough life that that we you and I uh, uh, are addict community that would, would be able to recognize this. You come from a pretty hard lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. traumatic. Yeah, yeah, it's traumatic, exactly. Yeah. It's, it is easily traumatic. And um, so, however, I noticed after years, uh, um, there's still some chaos going on. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, I've got off the, the, got away from like the horrible chaos and got to a resting point, sort of, sort of a resting feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and so, even after many years in recovery, I'm interested in doing something like this because I, I think I could get even, you know, a, oh, a little yes. more uh, serenity in my life. Everyone would benefit just, from it. Yeah. And having moments of chaos are part of the human experience. experience you know, everyone experiences that. Yeah. And having a consistent yoga practice always is that one thing that keeps me grounded, yeah. you know, keeps me solid and accepting of myself and not beating myself up for feeling chaotic, you know, because I get all chaotic and then sometimes it's like, well, what's wrong with you? You're not supposed to be, right. you know, feeling crazy anymore. Right, exactly. <laughs> really, right. like, everyone feels crazy yeah. sometimes. Yeah, well, and don't get me started, but the, right, the environment <laughs> we live in, in, you know, it's not yeah. just the United States, but I think it is especially the United States, uh, and there's probably other countries, too, that are, you know, uh, that I've heard, like Japan might be one where you just like everybody's work, 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 go, go, go. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why there's mm -hmm. so many pharmaceuticals that are being Absolutely. used just to be able to, to keep up with uh, everyone else, yeah. right? And so if you it's it's very difficult for us in this culture that we have now to be comfortable within ourselves. It's it's very difficult for people to be still 
and to calm their mind. And, and, and it's a practice. You have to discipline yourself to do these things. And I think that's one of the most important aspects that uh, people in recovery need. They need mental discipline. They need the physical, they need those two things, mental and physical discipline. And it's something that takes time. Right, right. But once you get it, once you're on that track, you realize this is the key. Right. Because that's what makes you connect to your, your, your truth, your inner truth, your spirit. and your spirit, and, and your power. Right. So you're not giving your power to whatever the addiction is. Because right. that will only drain you. Right. No, Yoga no, recharges you. To be clear, because as soon as you said discipline, I was like... <laughs> discipline <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you, you don't mean like you know uh military discipline not at mean, all yeah, right, right not at so all explain discipline just a little more just for me I, yeah I like, so um if i were to come in uh what would you know where would i in, uh, i think i think i'm going to pass that question on to kelly because i think she's experienced oh, that okay, first yeah. hand with the extreme, I mean, she's had the extreme yeah. opposites, and she right. brought them together right. to find peace in her life. Right. And if it's explainable, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I think is. when she says discipline, as in self-discipline, just um, getting out of your comfort zone, challenging yourself, um, taking responsibility for your health. Yes. You know, like being accountable for your own health and. Um, all of the work that you do on a yoga mat, having that discipline on your yoga mat where you're able to let go of your ego and not push too hard because, you know, be accepting of your level and right. modifying to your level and just taking responsibility for your own body in the moment. And all the work that you do on the yoga mat just has a trickle effect into your life outside of the studio. Like you start to notice you have, you're accountable and responsible and all other areas of your life that starts to happen over time. Yeah. And that, right, and to, and to keep keep coming back, not to use that phrase, yes. but, you know, but to keep practice. doing it. Yeah, it's a practice. It's a practice. Yeah. And, and the discipline, it starts out a little bit at a time. If you go in there and you're super aggressive with yourself and you have these expectations that, you know, I should be able to do this, or I should be able to th do that, you're setting yourself for up for you're sabotaging sure. yourself. Sure. And isn't that what it, addiction is? Yeah. It's self sabotage. It's sure. self destructiveness. Yeah. I, uh, but yoga yeah. unwinds that. Right. And you still do it. I mean, I remember the first year I practiced, I was still crazy, like completely insane. Sure. I was yeah. looking around the room, not looking at myself. I was drinking water all the time when I didn't need to, just to distract myself from what was going on. And it took a, a lot of time and dedication. And I think what happens is you start to become aware of your negative habitual thinking patterns. You start to become aware of your habits and you know the fact that you're distracting yourself. And then over time, you just things just change naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. I I have to tell you, yeah. I mean, uh, when it just just like you're saying, if you come into the, the yoga studio and and just go at it aggressively. It was my experience in uh, early recovery that, it, because, because as an addict, uh, I, I want it just like everything else. I want it now. Well, you, that's the culture that we live in. Yeah, and we you want can't, it. Right. You know, it's it's <laughs> take this pill, you'll get instant. You know, this yeah. or that, right. and Eastern philosophy is not that. Right. You know, it's it's completely different way of of thinking yeah. and living your life. It's. You, you know, you, you do the practice of yoga, but like Kelly said, it, it begins to resonate from your mat, the time that you spend on your mat, it begins to resonate throughout your entire life. So you're able to connect to that calm because you understand the effects of deep breathing. You understand the effects of being present. You begin to understand the effects of being observant and mindful of what you're doing to your body inside and out and you care you have empathy you have compassion for yourself and when you have empathy and compassion for yourself you then begin to have empathy and compassion for the rest of the world nice. it's it's a resonating effect yeah i see i, I still need it 
I still, like, I still, yes. you know what I mean? Everyone still needs yoga. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, what you what you have coming up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, a few years ago, I was approached by a student who said, you know, I know that you know a lot of people in recovery are coming to this studio. Do, why, why don't we think about bridging the gap between um, the yoga studio and the recovery community and, and doing something so that you're bringing more people into the studio so they can experience, you know, the, the, this healing process that, that so many of us know about. Right. Um, and I was, I was definitely receptive to it. You know, I didn't really know what to do, but um, I knew Kelly's story and I, I knew she wanted to be involved as well. So we, we uh, developed a uh, new class that was a uh, sliding scale class so people can make a donation of, you know, five dollars or, or more to take Excellent. the class. Excellent. Uh, so it's uh, geared towards the recovery community, but it's open to everyone. Yep. So it's not exclusive. Yep. So we brought that class into our studio for Sundays at 6 p.m. Yeah. hoping to attract um, more of a community feeling for those who are in recovery because it's intimidating yeah. to go into a new place yeah. and especially if you don't know people who are going there um, so I feel like a lot of the people that come to that class and a lot of the people that come to the the studio who are in recovery they know each other sure they, they you know and they, yeah. they, they oh, talk to each other yeah, yeah. and right. and right. so it's a, it's a really great community feeling yeah. Um, so I was happy to, to introduce that class, but I knew that I needed to do more. I knew that there was more to so, be done. So you're encouraging yeah. diversity. Oh, um, yeah. yeah um, Absolutely. And, have, and um, just real quickly, like, generally, are you seeing uh, um, uh, various ages, men and oh, women? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Different uh, Absolutely. gender, Absolutely. race. And, we, I mean, and, uh, we... We, we have a very diverse um, population of people that, that come to our studio. A lot of men. Yeah. I know yoga is something that is, is kind of d difficult for um, men to be comfortable with because sure. a lot of men have that very, you know, like very competitive. They tend to be a little more aggressive. And uh, th this, this you know, it, it, this and, style and of yoga can really resonate. Quite frankly, with us. afraid to be like, right. well, I get it to feminine or something. Well, and the the other thing is that we do we have that a could be fear. Full length mirror. Oh, okay. That yeah. spans the entire room. Right, right. And it's it's very hot and it's very humid, so it's a very raw, visceral experience. Oh, yeah. You know, you're sweating buckets. Right. And you don't um, have to wear, like, like pink spandex or anything. Right, right, right. right, right. So <laughs> come dressed as you, you know, just dress however right. you want right. to. Yeah, I'm just absolutely. trying to get, get you know. Yeah, like, good, yeah. But it's, it's a very, it's it a very be, it cathartic experience. Yeah. Um, it yeah. really, it breaks everything down for people. And uh, I think it really just... It's it's a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. The class it's it's intense and it works, yeah. and it breaks down these shells that we enclose. Like Kelly was talking about the the mental prison that yeah. you know, the, and and the physical prison that we a lot of times are encapsulated in. Fear the fear, yeah. and and the mental right. pain, the physical pain. It starts to unwind all that. So, so your body and your mind changes very quickly, very quickly in this process. So, I, so I think that's why, for people who are in recovery, they see the changes come so quickly that they, it's they're very hopeful. Yeah. Finally, something is making a, an impact. It's not just on the mind. Right. It's, right. it's the whole package. It's your mind and your body, which is right. as it should be. And, and may even like start. Absolutely. Right. And if uh, drinking still water, and, right, and right, quitting right. smoking. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And it all start coming. Yeah. yeah. It took me a long time to quit smoking. So yeah. Uh, when I, you know, me too. Um, yeah. Did it, yeah. Yeah. But so the, it's a, the it's the yeah. detoxifying process. It's the heat yeah. and the humidity. You're yeah. using your skin as the largest organ of elimination, yeah. getting those toxins out of your body much quicker, so yeah. that they're not just sitting there. Yeah. 
Okay, and we're we're not running out of time, but we're getting down there. Is it? Uh, you, there's more that you have coming up. So yeah, um, so I knew that there was more that I needed to do, and um, out of my own uh, my own family's uh, issue, I had a brother who died last year. Oh. Um, yes, and and that created a lot of grief. In, in my family and, and for me and this feeling of hopelessness. Um, so out of that sprang this really strong desire to actually do something much more powerful than just having one class a week. And uh, because then it became very real for me it, in my family. Do you mind if I ask, was he, uh an addict? Is he? Uh, is oh, he, yes. Yes, okay. Um, okay. Absolutely, sure. from the age 12, from when my father died on. Uh, um, so it that came out of trauma, which yeah. it usually does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually comes out of childhood trauma. Sure. And uh, But specifically, it was after a, a drunk driving accident that broke his neck, and then he needed to be on painkillers for the rest of his life. Uh, and he was introduced to Oxy. Um, and he was on Oxy for 20 years, and it finally killed him. Yeah. 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 Slow and cruel. And Slow and cruel and changed him, and it was uh, frightening. Yeah. So it was out of Sorry that. that. I didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. But it was, it was really, it was out of that, that this, this uh, idea to create um, this conference in Portland came from. So something beautiful sprang out of it, and I know that he had a hand in it. Uh, so I, I found some speakers to come to Portland, um, and they have all struggled through a very intense uh, opiate addiction and recovery. Um, I mean, good that you yeah, brought them, that you yes, can come in and speak. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and this came together very quickly. I had this idea in June. And we started putting it together literally July, August, September. It's come together very, very quickly. Nice. And we've been able to spread the word um, very quickly. When as is well. it? And, and October where? 9th. Okay. It's at the Portland Public Library. Oh, okay. From it's 2 right to 7. Down the street from our studio, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And uh, so Kelly's going to be one oh. of our speakers. And October 9th is, falls on what day? That is a Friday. Okay, from two to seven. From two to seven. Can I show up after work at five thirty? Yes. Example, right? <laughs> like you don't have to be there too. No, um, no, right? absolutely not. Right. But you should definitely buy a ticket yeah. soon if you know that you're going to come right. because it is um, the space is limited. Yeah. This is the first time that we've done this, so you know we didn't want to go all gung ho. Right. Um, we wanted to just to feel it out and see what the response was mm -hmm. and um, that it, I mean it definitely seems like people are ready for change in this community um, the time is now so this this conference is very apropos it's, nice. it's very timely nice yeah definitely I think people are ready to talk about this very openly yeah. I'll put uh, more information We'll have information yeah. written so that yeah. people can uh, uh, make note of it yeah. um, at you know towards the end of the yeah. show. So, uh, was there one more thing that I think you said? Well, we're was? also having um, an open house at our studio the next oh. day. Oh, okay. So Saturday, Saturday. Uh, October tenth, we have free classes all day. Uh, we'll have some guest teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a speaker from New York City, and one from. Austin, Texas, who are both yoga teachers, and they're going to be teaching uh, classes on that day. Good deal. So, oh, um, Main Hatha Yoga, 49 Dartmouth Street, will oh, have classes at 7 and 9, and 2, Kelly's going to be teaching at 4 and 6 p.m. They're all free classes. And they can go to the, the your website? Main Hatha Yoga. Yep. Yeah, and the conference is... Um, is called Yoga and Mindfulness for Addiction Recovery, and we have a website for that. Sure. It's Y-M-F-A-R. I assume you uh, keep an updated... Uh, Facebook. List, well, list yeah, of uh, classes and times and... Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So hit that website. Uh, 
um, yeah. and uh, check that out. Is there a, a yeah? Any so of Kelly, um, this conference is is going to be launching a project that that Kelly and I are involved with. Okay. So I'll let her explain that. Yeah. So um, two of our speakers, Jeannie and Ted, are from a nonprofit called Pure Action, mm -hmm. and their mission is to medically document the physical um, and medical benefits of yoga and bring that information to mainstream medicine. Their goal eventually being to get insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid to right on. And recognize it as medicine. Um, and through Pure Action, we're starting a project called One Posture at a Time in Portland, and that is going to be bringing yoga to local sober houses, detoxes, recovery centers. Um, and through One Posture at a Time, we're going to be um, introducing the yoga sponsor program, which will <clears throat> allow any residences of any people residing at those facilities to have access to unlimited monthly memberships at yeah. our studio. Um, we're gonna have like donation boxes and uh, grants and fundraising to keep that program going. So, I mean, the main thing that keeps people out of yoga studios is the financial aspect of it, right. mm -hmm. especially in early recovery. So this will change that, you know, they'll have access to monthly memberships and Nice. Yeah. That's so that's, we're really excited about. I that. love the, the name too. Yeah. I think I think you mentioned it when we met, and I was like, oh, that's such that's a great name. <laughs> posture at a time. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, um, I think that's all we have for for time. So um, thank you for coming. And uh, and again, this will be a um, a series on uh, uh, creative uh, recovery in Portland and and other uh, recovery news, um, but. Uh, it was great having you both. Thank you. And Thank you uh, maybe I can convince you to come back another time. I think probably you could right. convince us to do that. Right. Yeah. I should convince you to host the show. Only if we can convince you to come try. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. How about that? Absolutely. Yeah, mutual exchange. All right. So you're going to host the next show. All right. <laughs> All right. Nice. We'll find, oh, yeah, nice. we'll find, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll, I'll, I'll get back behind the cameras. We'll interview then, you. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Because after your first class. Essentially, yeah. If this is, a, right, after my first class, this is a creative, um, as far as I'm, this is in the line of helping people. You know, this is a creative way of helping people. So it is what you do, too. So. Yeah. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time.